First, we're going to answer a quick question for your friend of mine, Mr. Mule, Green Mule. Uh, this is a Type 69 Speedway 115 volt AC DC made in Cicero, Illinois. That's what it is. Well, before we do what we're going to do, we need to add a little bit of fluid. To the loader because it is not going up all the way with the bucket curled all the way down and this is the fill port right here and I've got my ATF right here multi-use I'm gonna get that filled up and then I'll show you guys what we're uh, working with today all right, we got the hydro fluid all topped off for the loader, and this is what we've got. This is a 60 inch, 60 inch um, legacy blade that we are going to attempt to retrofit onto a, Sov or a Sunstar. Um, I think it's possible because the mounting premise is very similar. Uh, it's got the set of pins here and here and the only thing I would have to do is to do take some measurements and make a lift rod that will work uh, I have to make it a little bit longer than when this is just sitting at level on the ground because these springs right here um, will compress and give you down pressure on the blade so I'll have to do some measuring but it should be pretty similar to the factory one now this one right here is for a snowblower for legacy it has this end already done but it's got that pin welded in so you don't lose that bracket right there because that bracket right there was the bane of many uh, useless blades because on the older model legacies these were pinned on just like just like a, a pin, a cotter pin. Yeah, and people would misplace them and then not be able to mount their uh, decks. And you cannot buy just that piece. So the reason for this piece of metal being welded onto this is just to set the height um, so you can't over travel the height and run it into the front of the legacy. So. This end is right. The bends are wrong. It's got two little bends in it, but, and I also don't know my length. Uh, 32, 33 inches is roughly the length of what a stock lift arm would be for this. So we're gonna see what we can devise to make this blade work on a Sunstar. So let me get it out of the truck and we'll get it in front of a Sunstar and start doing some measuring and see what we've gotta do. Sorry about the fan noise. Uh, this right here is the control rod for angling the blade. The bitter end of it down here you can see. Give you a little better shot of that. It's got two holes in it and then it has a cable there. A little ball end on it. Okay. That simply attaches right here with these two clips. 
and that plate goes right there and it goes down and it gets a hold of this little guy right here you slide that ball in there and that's what you grip and you push or pull to change the angle of the blade and right now I do know that this piece right here we are not going to need and looking at it These springs are holding on to that, keeping it from being able to flip up this way for me to take that one piece off. If I can take the long piece off, this is part of the lift mechanism on a Legacy. The Legacy has a ladder frame that mounts underneath it. So, this first thing we're going to want to do is just measure the width of these two pins. I'll start at the beginning, measure the width of those two pins. Make sure these ears right here are not too high. I am not sure. Um, we may use this end for the lift. I don't know. We're just going to have to get it down there, look at it, and see what works. Uh, these pivot points here with the pins in them are what goes on the back set. I'll show you all that here right now. You've got your forward set, which is where those solid pins go. And then back here is, can you see it? Back here is another hole right there. And that's what those little floaty bits, those pins are right there would go into. So right now, just gonna get a measurement between here and here. And then we'll check a measurement up here and see what we've got, pretty simple. In fact, we can just do this here. Right there, we've got 10 inches plus an inch on either side. So a total of 12 inches. We'll just come down here and give this a measure. And we are 10 and 1. Let's see, get the inside. We're right at 10 inches to the inside. So that should just sl slip right down in there. So... Let's flop that blade down, scoot it under here, see if we can't get those two pins right there, that pin, the one just like it on the other side, to slide up under there. And then see where we're at from there as far as what's going to obstruct operation, what's going to help operation. So let me get the blade down there and in those two slots and we'll see what we've got. I'm also going to take the hood off just so it's out of the way and we can see better. Well, that could not have been any easier. Uh, you saw on the time lapse. Of course, camera was looking up here for a little bit of it, but uh, it slid right in. And when it came to the full stop in the back, allowed me to put the pins in to those plates. So the blades mounted. Now all we have to do is figure out how to raise it up and down, and I believe we'll be able to use that right there that is welded to the arm and then we have this one down here that's just hanging out this one is not needed so I'll probably pull the blade back off take 
these two springs off here which will allow me to separate this section back here get that rod out and take that piece completely off because I don't think I'm going to need that piece right there at all at all but I might I don't think I do but I might um, you guys might notice there's four holes in this thing uh, for a legacy um, depends on the tire size you use one set of holes for the bigger tires the other set of holes for the smaller tires and um, you also notice that here we do have the standoffs and bosses front and back for a hydraulic cylinder to be able to maneuver this thing hydraulically then all you'd have to do is just get a hold of that pull it back and just lock it in the rearward position because it's spring loaded this blade has one two three four five positions uh, four trip springs and two overload springs so in other words the way it's sitting right now just resting when I make the lift arm for this when I get the lift arm situated I want to be able to push this assembly down and by doing that it will compress these springs and allow this blade to have down pressure without having excessive down pressure you still have to kind of go slow if you're going over bumpy terrain in case you catch something but that's what these springs up here are for if you catch something the bucket will just lurch forward a little bit and it won't throw you out of your seat unless you're in high gear just going full bore which you really shouldn't do anyway so so far it's been painless um, I really do like that it is the bigger blade these were these came with a 46 or 48 inch blade initially but this is a five foot blade which is going to make it really nice and mind you this is not the tractor it'll be going on I just grabbed the pretty Sunstar because it didn't have an implement mounted to it we come over here and we see we are 60 inches right at five feet um, the wear bar looks good on it it has new shoes on it new skid shoes that are adjustable uh, another thing that we will need to do is to fabricate the arm that comes up here on the side that the lift rod that's sitting over there by Zippo's Green Giant will slide through and what that'll do is that'll enable me to be right back here in the operator's seat I can just reach forward and grab that and push and pull to change the angle of the blade in the comfort of a snow cab by the way which I do have it's over at my buddy Biggie Rats um, and it will go on the tractor that gets this blade so that I will have a fully dressed winter duty machine and uh, as far as heat goes you'll be getting some engine heat not a lot of it but you'll be getting some engine heat and your own body heat sure is nice when the winds are blowing and snows are blowing and it's a blizzard and you can barely see and the windscreen's all covered up because you it's covered in snow and it's just a ratty old mess but you're comfortable <laughs> you're not freezing um so I'm looking forward to this. I'm glad that uh, this did not sell because uh, I had a couple legacies a while back that I sold. Well, Miss Zippo has one. Lisa has one. And um, I call her Miss Zippo. I apologize. Uh, Lisa has one. Um, and uh, the other one I sold with the snowblower. No. Sold it separate and then someone else bought the snowblower and I did have two blades and I sold one blade and shipped it via fastenal and got rid of it but I am glad that one blade remains because I this thing it, it just a direct connect really really simple so I didn't take the hood off yet I'm going to do that now so we can figure out and get our lengths and measurements and figure out what we need to do with this rod here to make this rod work um, I don't think that I don't even think it's 32 inches long, which is the length that uh, 32, 33 inches long, which I believe uh, on Arch's garage, he's got uh, full schematics that he shows a number of times where he actually uh, made one. And I will definitely be referencing that, and I appreciate him getting on my channel. Yeah, see, we're, we're way too short here. We're, uh, 
only 26 and three quarters inches long so you've got some length to make up there but um i don't know if i've got five eighths i should have a piece of five eighths solid rod over here somewhere that i can use to extend this and i'll just put a sleeve over top of it to make it nice and rigid but i think we'll go ahead and um attempt to use this because this end is correct the way that the hole is offset so on the other end the hole will be offset to this side and these do run parallel to one another so it'll be sitting just like that on the other end uh, pretty much like it is now uh, so but yeah i guess enough babbling i do have a weld to cut off there so that i can weld off, get the weld off both sides there and there get that pin out with as little damage to those pieces as we can and then this piece here uh that'll make somebody's day who's who doesn't have this piece because this piece mounts to the underside of the frame of the of the uh for the lift so anyway all right enough babbling that's been seven and a half sort of a little over seven minutes of babbling uh, let's get the hood off and do some measuring and see what we need as far as the lift arm goes. And I also want to take my jack and raise it up and down or take the hoist and raise it up and down and check our clearance on that upper uh, piece of steel right here. That piece right there. We'll make sure that we're going to clear everything when this thing is in the full up position. So, hang on. Well, welcome back to Leaksville. If you remember, the pretty one had the power steering hose that was leaking. We took care of that one. I didn't know that I had another leaking hose. And the other leaking hose just happens to be this hydro hose right here. And it is for the lift. Discovered that when I started it. And it started peeing out a bunch of fluid. So we're going to start it. Noise alert. I'm going to operate the lift. You guys will see when I get it to a certain point, it just starts pouring oil. Let me get this. Uh... God, I love that thing. <laughs> I know I say it every time, but, you know, it's it, it's great. It's just great. All right. Um, it's uh, this line right here. Okay. It goes down, takes a hard turn to the right, goes over and down over to the cylinder, which we can just barely see right there, okay? That's where this line right here goes. This is the line that's leaking. It's just dripping right down off the bottom edge of it, going down, hitting the frame, and then leaking right there where I've got the oil dry. There's a drip there. So here we go. Noise alert. good leaker right there it's leaking a lot so I'm gonna get the blade off get this thing hoisted up in the air so I can get under there a little easier and get that line taken care of hopefully one of the lines that I still have here will be that one and I'm pretty sure this is all of the hydro lines that were used uh, and there were two steering lines um, two of the same steering lines that were in here for the rear uh, portion of the uh, power steering cylinder. But anyway, we're not worried about that. But uh, you guys can get a better look at how everything went together here. Um, now looking at this, I don't know if this is gonna pass through, right through there, I think it will. It'll attach right here and pass right through there and I'll be able to lift and lower. We'll find out. We will definitely find out. But I can't get measurements and do all that stuff until I get the oil leak fixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and mess around with that, get that new hose on there, get that leak stopped. Because if I don't do it now, I'll procrastinate and it won't get done. It'll be peeing fluid everywhere all the time. Uh, 
then we'll get back into figuring out our lift rod length once we've got everything taken care of we'll do a full back measurement full up measurement we'll raise the blade up and get a measurement with the cylinder all or with the rock shaft all the way back we'll get our measurement and then we'll bring it all the way forward and we'll raise the axle which will allow the blade to settle down on the ground a little bit more uh, it, it'd be over 90 degrees or over 180 degrees so it'd be you know like 190 190 degrees so that it has some down pressure to compress those springs right there and just keep down pressure on it as you can see we can see daylight coming out from underneath the skid pads so we're fine on the adjustment on those but um, this is why we do it now right I'm not gonna need that lift at all when this gets the loader you don't use the lift for anything but it's broke so may as well fix it right right all right well the pile of hoses giveth again here's the spot on the lift cylinder hose that went bad right there and the pile had two of them so, good on that. Got the line in. There's this line right here. It just goes down, routes around, and comes up and mounts right there to the top of that cylinder. So, now I just need to put the pins back in the cylinder, set the thing on the ground, start it up, see if we've got uh, our leaks taken care of. I went ahead and pulled this cover off make it a little easier on me to get that cylinder pinned through the back but I'll get that done set it down we'll start it up see if we've got that leak taken care of then we'll proceed with getting that blade lift arm figured out I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the covers off it makes it a lot easier for me to get to the uh, mounting points having that cover off of there so I can get a tape measure and pretty sure that my line of sight is going to be real good coming straight through that gap that I showed earlier and then making that bend up to come and get a hold of that hole there so here we go all right time to see if we took care of that leak Ugh, I suppose I need a flash I'd do an impromptu repair here uh, no, not the flashlight itself. Um, two of the magnets pulled out. Apparently, it got so toasty where it was sitting that it released the glue on these two. So, they're back in. They're not coming back out. And while I was out, I fixed my <laughs> knee pad. That's only been ripped right here for, oh, I don't know, two or three or four or longer years. I used a 3M automotive adhesive spray adhesive and then just wrap some gorilla tape around it so that it's got a good chance of curing but i'm always picking it up by that side and going ah i want to pick it up from the other side but it just doesn't work that way so just fix it uh, okay let's see what we get see if we took care of our leaks now where this one was leaking was you know roughly right there but Give her a go. Contact when three, two, one, two. Wait. I need to put the brake on. Not because it has to be on to start it, but because I've got it in neutral and I don't want it to drop in a gear and possibly move on me. Okay. Ready? Now we can do it. Okay, I didn't do anything with that line.
well rats. I did nothing with that line. And it wasn't leaking before. What do you think about that? Crazy. Okay, let me get the mat out. The knee pad out. Let's start it back up again. before. Well, guess what? I get to replace another line. All right. Just when you think the job is done. And that, that's bizarre. Gotta love that, huh? Well, it's gonna end up having all replacement lines on it. I mean, replacement with used lines, yeah, but let me get some of that. Yep. Yeah, I used the camera to see if I got it. Goodness sakes. Well, back to the drawing board on that. That line is the top line, I believe, right? No. Top line's the one I just replaced. That's this one. It's the bottom line. Well, fiddlesticks. Uh, it's actually the end of the day for me, so we're going to pick this back up tomorrow, and I'll replace that line tomorrow. Then we'll make sure we don't have any leaks again. Gee whiz. <laughs> Reminded me of Leave it to Beaver June saying Ward I'm worried about the beef <laughs> All right Pick it up in the morning. It'll just be a second for you guys Day two now we've got <laughs> We got the one line replaced this one here now we got to replace this one so I'm going to pop that one off. All you do, you put a three quarter inch there to hold that steady and a five eighths breaks that loose. Same thing down on the cylinder. There are two pins hold the cylinder in with a couple of cotter pins. Um, you drop those out. It's the cylinders right there, right there. So this right here is the line that I need to do. So I don't even need to take the cylinder off this time. I did need to take it off for the forward one, but this back one, pretty sure I can snake that out from underneath the uh, trans rod here. There, just move that out of the way, get that one loosened up. Ah, I didn't get the pin in the cylinder. You see that? <laughs> Oops. That's what happens when you're driving blind. The pin is through the correct hole, but it's not through the cylinder. That's funny. All right, I'm gonna get that loose. Get this long line out. Be this one right here. Get that swapped out. Start her back up again. See if we've got any more leaks. We're gonna gotta get all these lines taken care of before we permanently mount the loader. And we're only temporarily test fitting and figuring out the geometry of the lift rod using this one. It'll be the same on the uh, other Sunstar. So since this one didn't have any implements on it and it was easy access to, easier access to everything, we're just doing it here first. That way when we go to swap that blade over onto the loader tractor and get the loader onto this one, um, it'd just be a matter of just doing a standard installation. So enough babbling, let's get to it.
And we may have a problem. I don't know if I've got one long enough just to throw. This one right here looks like the longest one. Let's see how that works out. Hey, success. We do have it. Pickings are getting slim. <laughs> if I keep this up, I'll end up using all of them. Um, now the one that blew out is right here. You can see right there where it's wet. That is where the hole is. So, garbage. It has to go. Alright, let's get it in there. I'm going to put it on the bottom first, down here. And it snakes through here. Through the power steering hoses. Then it routes over on top of the oil cooler line. Come on. There we go. But behind the trans fill, or to the outside of the frame rather, goes over and goes under the fuel line. And then it goes under the hydro line over here, which you guys probably can't see. Then it has to make a 90 degree, or excuse me, 180 degree flip around in order to screw into the cylinder. So that's going to take a little bit of trickery, but I think we can get it. I'll bring you guys over here where you can see what I'm doing. Routing it in the same way that uh, the old one came out. Get you on the steering wheel and poke you down there. And I am going to be in the way, just to let you know. But we're going right there. Right there. So, to start off with, I just need the 5 8 Then when I go to get it cinched, I will use the 3 quarter to hold the larger part of that line in place. Hmm. I just don't like it routing under this. Because it looks like a pinch point. Was it above? Was that above? I don't remember. Do you remember? I do know. Right here is where the zip tie was wrapped around it. And it was snipped onto there. I got to review the footage. That means I have to shut the camera off. Hang on. All right. Footage didn't give me anything. Uh, so I've just made the executive decision to run it over that line. Then we've got to get it positioned so that we can get that started. And then I can zip tie it down afterward. What do we got going on here? Gotta get that bend just right and get those threads aligned. Now quit doing that, please, and thank you. take a look at it oh yeah no. nowhere near close why don't you guys say something i think that's about got it 
It's gonna be a pain, but I think I'm just gonna use the wrench to try to coax it while I'm holding on with the other hand. It doesn't want to spin as freely as I would like for it to, so my fingers are not able to grab it and spin it. I think it's going, is it? Yep, we're going, okay. Uh, you don't need to watch the rest of this, I'm just gonna tighten it down, then I will zip tie that line back down here where it was zip tied right there. Then we'll get the other end connected. I'll show you a little trick if you want to isolate lines and make sure they're not in contact with anything else. I'm going to loosely put a zip tie around the new hose, okay? Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to run another zip tie just around that zip tie I just put on. Just like this. Can you see that? Let me get you guys over here a little bit more. Just around that zip tie. Then, give it a little tug. And you can see, it's putting a barrier on that. Putting a barrier on that so that it will not come in contact with anything. So now I'm going to finish tightening this one down and then to secure everything come in tighten it tighten it tighten that sucker as much as you can right there and now that line is completely isolated from touching anything but the zip tie. The zip tie is holding it in suspension so that I shouldn't wear that line out. I've got this one on, I've got to tighten it down, then we will start this and see if we got rid of the leaks on that cylinder after we put the pin back in the cylinder back here. It's go time. I got that pin back where it's supposed to be now. You see that pin is going through the cylinder instead of underneath the cylinder. So now, fingers crossed, no more leaks. Noise alert. I gotta move stuff out of the way here. Okay, noise alert. Why? Why no start? Why no? Oh, hot. Now it'll start. Hey. Yay. <laughs> I do have one more thing I need to do to this before putting the loader on it, and that is replace the engine mounts. Do I have to? No. Do I want to? Yes. Why? Because if the engine mounts let go, 
this engine after the loaders on there this engine is just going to want to flip flop all over everywhere be a lot easier for me to do it now um not this instant but soon and these are the motor mounts and they're not cheap uh i bought two sets and two sets were 177 dollars yeah uh-huh yeah 177 dollars and 44 cents but that's them. They are specific to the Sun Stars. The way they work is they just drop down in a big hole right underneath where the bolt goes through for the engine mount. And then you have a bunch of uh, fender washers. You have fender washer on top here, fender washer on bottom there. And when you squish everything together, like so, they collapse in on themselves. Ugh. I can't get it to... I'll show you this way. They collapse in on themselves and accordionate just like that. Come on, almost. Kind of hard to do when it's not in a hole, but you get the idea. See how it wants to fold right there? It does that fold all the way around. And in doing that fold all the way around, it, there we got it. It forms an upper and a lower pinch point because there is a steel insert in there. So, there's no shortcut to it. You have to use the right part for the right job. Um, but anyway, that's something that's got to get done before the loader goes on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this part. This is going to be sort of kind of part of making sure the blade fits. And then, chasing leaking hoses. Since we had two of the hoses go bad and it took quite a while to do, we'll... Uh, We'll let it rest here. Then we'll do a part two on making the lift rod to work and operate the blade the way we need it to and take our measurements and do all that fun stuff. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll see you when I see you.